Hi everyone and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie. I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And today we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing an assessment of my hand knitted sweaters. Okay, so fall is approaching. Uh, it is early September, but it's still pretty sunny and pretty warm here where I live in Southern California. But also my Ireland trip is approaching and I pulled out one of my knits from last year uh, to put it in the wash today and well, like re-block it basically, hand wash it. And I realized that I should really take a look at all of my sweaters that I knit last year um, and one from the year before. Yeah, one from the year before. And wash them if they need to be washed because if I want to take them on my upcoming trip, I think they should be clean. And for this upcoming season, I did not wash them at the end of winter last year, this year, earlier this year, when I was supposed to. I don't know. Um, and I know that I have some modifications that I want to make on some of these sweaters. So if I'm also going to be wringing them on my trip, I really want to make sure that I like the way they fit, the sleeves aren't too short, um, and the body length isn't too short. And on some of these, I know that I need to make changes. I knew I needed to make changes when I finished the garment last year, and I was just in such a rush to like get the next one on the needles that I didn't take the time to make these garments fit me as best as possible. So I thought it would be fun to go through, try these on, see what needs to be changed, if anything, um, and take you guys along for the process so you can see what my current hand knit sweater wardrobe looks like, what I'm going to be wearing this fall and winter along with you know the other things that I make this year. Um, obviously I'm wearing my Cal cardigan that I finished a few weeks ago. I'm obsessed with it. I think I've worn it in like every video since I finished it um, but that's where we're at. So let's get started. The first sweater that I want to talk to you about today is this one. This is my Dear Duomo by Sunghee Knits. It is knit in Explorer Knits and Fibers Cashmere Cavern Sock held double in the colorway Fia. This one I really would like to take to Ireland because this was an Ireland colorway uh, from Allie's Ireland collection, Explorer Knits Ireland collection. Now, when I tried this on, uh, I already knew what needed to be updated. I knit the sleeves on this too short. I actually think that I need to add about two inches to each of the sleeves to get them to a length that I really like. I would also like to add in a little bit of elastic to the neckband so that it sits closer to my neck. It doesn't open up as wide. And then the other piece that I did not do um, is on the side of the body on this sweater, you do a pearl row. And what this does is it creates a faux seam. If you can see that right there. And you're supposed to mattress stitch up the two knits on either side of the pearl um, to help create that faux seam to give the body a little bit more structure. This was also something like I was rushing when I was working on this, trying to get it done as quickly as possible, and I did not take the time to like knit that up. And I think it would be good, and I would like to, uh, seam that together. So. This is probably one of the sweaters that I have like the most work to do on, um, but I really want to wear it. I think it's a really great neutral color. I think the sweater in general is gorgeous. I love the drop shoulder fit on me, and I'm excited to take it with me on my trip and wear it all throughout fall and winter. The next sweater on my list is one of my favorites that I knit up last fall, and it is the Clove Sweater by Rachel Kurihara. This was knit um, also in Explorer Knits and Fibers. This is her Rockies DK base in the colorway Barrel Age Sour. Um, this is really when I learned that like dark purples and dark reds really look good on me. I was obsessed and still am obsessed 
with this colorway and with this sweater. Um, and I just love the overall fit of this sweater also. I think the size is perfect for me, the shape is perfect for me, and I love everything about it. There are actually no modifications that I want to make to this sweater. I just need to wash it. I did not wash it last year. It's got some gunk. I don't even know if I should show this. Can you see? It's got some gunk on the sleeve and I just need to give it a good block, a good soak, get all this stuff off of it um, and like refresh it so that it's ready to wear later this year. So this is my clove sweater. Honestly, if you're looking for a good drop shoulder, um, this would be the one that I would recommend because it's my favorite. I mean, the Dear Duomo as well, but the clove, I don't know. It's hard to say actually because the next one is also a drop shoulder and I absolutely love this one also. I tried it on and I was like, should I make another one of these this year? I think I should. <laughs> um, this is the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit. I knit this in Sorelli yarn, uh, her Stellina fingering base held with mohair. Um, in the colorway Folklore from the Taylor Swift collection. I love this sweater so much, okay? I'm a huge fan of this like big wide neck. This is a folded over collar and I just like the way that the stitches um, are knit right around the collar also. I think this gives a really nice look. It's a drop shoulder. Um, this one did grow a bit in blocking. I think the combination of fingering weight plus mohair or Surrey just in general grows a lot in blocking a uh, super wash fingering weight yarn. Um, and so the sleeves are actually not too short. They're actually a little bit too long, which is an anomaly in most of my sweaters. Um, so I do have to fold the cuffs up when I wear it, but like I think it's kind of cute, so it doesn't bother me at all. This was the sweater, I don't know if you remember, that I did surgery on. Let's see if you can, can you see the line where I cut right down the middle? Yeah, it's somewhere like right along here. I cut down the middle of the sweater, it was too long, I wanted to take out some length, and um, I thought by just cutting it like right in the middle of the sweater would be the right place to do it. In hindsight, if I were to do this again, I would definitely do it closer to the ribbing, take some things out, and then just reattach the ribbing so that you don't get like a wonky line right across the middle of your sweater. But after blocking it once, that line did seem to minimize quite a bit. Um, I wore it like this all last year and like couldn't really notice it. So I just think another blocking um, and like a little bit of manipulation of these stitches will help to just like totally erase that line completely in general. So yeah, I can see it when I look at it. It's hard to see it on the camera, um, but I think if you like were to see this in person, you'd be like, yeah, I mean, I could tell there's something wonky there, but it's not like somebody's gonna like look at it and notice it straight away, you know? So that's my Oslo sweater. Again, no major modifications, just another block for this one. Okay. Oh, and yeah, those are my three drop shoulder sweaters. Honestly, I love drop shoulders. I want to make more, and I would recommend all three of those patterns, the Oslo sweater, the clove, and the Dear Duomo if you're interested in knitting a drop shoulder. Next up, this one was finished earlier in the year last year, and this is my sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit this in Knitting for Olive Merino plus Mohair in the colorway Dusty Aqua. I love this color. I think it's super gorgeous. And this one, I actually already did the modification that I needed to on this sweater. Um, if you remember from my podcasts uh, earlier in the year, I knit this and I knit one of the sleeves a cable repeat too short. <laughs> and when I was wearing this all last year, I was like, why does this one sleeve feel like it's shorter than the other? And I finally like took it off and like compared the sleeves and I was like, oh, because it literally is like eight rows shorter than the other sleeve. <laughs> so I did fix it last year. It was this one. You can kind of tell that like, and I didn't, so I didn't block it yet. 
Um, and so that's what this one needs. It's a good blocking because you can see just the differences between how this last cable repeat looks versus all of the other cable repeats. It's a little bit like squatter um, and not stretched out as much. So not a huge issue. I mean, I can wear this and nobody will notice. Uh, I feel like the sleeves are closer in length now, which is good. It's not bothering me anymore, but just a good block will help. The other thing too is that the neckline on this, when I blocked it the first time, I like pinned out the back of the neck and it just like sits up in a really weird way. If I'm wearing my hair down, doesn't bother me, no one will notice it. If I'm wearing my hair up, you can kind of tell that just like the back of the neck sits up really weird. Uh, so I would like to re-block this and fix that. Basically, I will not pin it out at all when I reblock it so that it doesn't look all weird. All right, next up is my Lento. This is my other favorite raglan sweater that I knit last year. Well, not other favorite. This was my favorite raglan that I knit last year. All of the drop shoulders, love. Raglans, this one is my favorite. And I've got sweater quantities to make more of these this year or sometime in the future. Um, I knit this in Explore Knits and Fibers Fingering Weight plus Surrey in the colorway To the Stars That Listen um, from the Akatar collection, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, I have no modifications that I need to make to this. It's absolutely perfect. Um, I think I'll just give it a block and a wash, a wash and a block, and so it'll be good to go. This one I'm definitely taking with me to Ireland. It's a perfect, like, turquoisey green to just wear all over the place. And it's super comfy cozy, and I love it. Next up is my Cozy Classic Raglan. Uh, this is by Jessie Made Designs, and I knit this in also Explorer Knits. Um, well, Explorer Knits fingering weight yarn, and then I held this with a Lang Lace mohair. Uh, I think the colorway for that was Storm Blue. Yeah, and this one, um, I have some thoughts about it. Honestly, this one is not my favorite fit overall. I think for multiple reasons. I think this the size I would have preferred slightly an oversized fit. Um, I have already added elastic to the neckband because I think the neckband on the Cozy Classic Raglan is just like incredibly wide and I don't like that. So I do feel like it fits better now that the neckline is brought in a little bit more. I would like to add some length a little bit to the sleeves, maybe another inch or two. And I would like to, the main thing actually that I would like to do on this is I want to redo the hem and do a split hem and maybe knit it a tiny bit longer. I think it's at two inches right now. I think two and a half inches with a split hem would really um, be really cute on this sweater. So I don't know if I'm going to take this one with me to Ireland, um, but just to wear for the fall, I think that would be a fun modification to make. All right, the next one and second to last that I have to show you, this is my Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. And I knit this in um, Ken Yarn, Aurora Fingering in the colorway Raspberry Sunday. Um, Ken Yarn is unfortunately no longer dying yarn. Um, and I held it with a strand of Lang Lace mohair in one of the hot pink colorways. I can't remember which one it was. But I do like this sweater. It is definitely a bit more, um, it's got less positive ease, which I actually think does look good on me. I think just, again, I need to lengthen the sleeve another inch or two, and I would like to lengthen the hem as well. I did a really tiny, tiny uh, ribbing on the bottom here with a little split hem, and I think it would be nice to just make this a little bit longer, both because I think I would like more length in general, and I feel like you can't even see the split hem with how short this ribbing is at the bottom here. So. 
that's my thought for this one this is a really fun color obviously it's like super hot pink magenta um, it's a little bit more jewel toned hot pink so it does look really good on me I found that the jewel tones are my colors so yeah that's where we are so okay those are all of the sweaters that I knit last year the last one the last one that I want to talk to you about because I saw this in my closet and I was like I already know what I want to do with this um, I figured I might as well just bring it up to in this episode this is my second cozy classic raglan actually the very first one that I ever knit um, I knit this in Sorella yarn DK in the colorway Catalina from her sun soaked collection and I love the color I'm not a huge fan of the way that it pulled um, and did that big stripe down the front and I'm not a fan of the way that I alternated skeins in the back because there's a huge line and overall this sweater doesn't fit it's too small so I would really love to frog this recoup the yarn and I actually want to make something else I think this would be really nice in a lento um, this is DK, but I think if I held this with a mohair or surrey that's like a little bit of a darker pink or purple um, to match some of these dark shades, I think first of all that would be better uh, for me to wear just for my skin tone and I think it would help with the variegation of this yarn. Um, Sorella does call this colorway a tonal, but I, I do think like it it stripes up and it variegates like a variegated yarn so I don't know I don't know where that where that comes from um, but I do want to frog this every time I try it on which is why I didn't people are like oh my gosh it looks so good on you like the negative ease looks great and I'm like thanks but I hate it <laughs> so if I can't stand to wear it then um, there's no point in keeping it and if I can recoup the yarn and make something better that I will wear um, it'll it'll just be better for everyone all around so I don't know when that will be happening but sometime later this year or next year I would love to do that so that's it, those are my projects. I'm going to start on a couple of these right now, a couple of the modifications, so that I can have these sweaters ready for Ireland, and I'll take you along with me while I work on some of them. So, let's go. Hopefully this doesn't dry in a weird shape. <laughs> I've never dried anything just on that rack, but um, my blocking mats are in use. So we'll see if I need to like reshape it, then we'll do it, it's fine.
here. So I have washed and blocked everything that just needed to be washed and blocked. So that's my clove sweater, sweater number 15, and my Oslo sweater. And now I'm working on the, I'm moving on to the actual work. And I'm gonna be starting with my Dear Duomo because this is the one I'm most excited for. Definitely wanna make sure it's done before my trip and it just needs the sleeves to be lengthened. So I already figured out I wanna add two inches to the sleeves. I need to go back and check what needle size I was using for this project. I wanna say it was a four or a 4.5, but I wanna make sure I'm using the same size. And I was going to try to cut the ribbing off knit and then reattach like um, graft the ribbing back together but there's an a decrease round literally the round right i don't know if you'll be able to see but there's a decrease round literally right before i start the ribbing so i don't in order to cut it i would need like a round in between i would need like three rounds that have the same number of stitches and I don't have that. So that's okay. I mean, my ribbing does look really nice and neat and pretty, but it's okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna have to redo it and that'll be okay. Oh, I need to grab the yarn too. This is my <laughs> bin of scraps I've been keeping since last year. And I know that my dear Duomo scraps are literally oh no they're not at the bottom these two skeins are what I need so I should be able maybe I can pull these out without disturbing everything else in here and maybe not but these are these are um two skeins held together fingering weight held together so all right now we're ready to go. I've got the ribbing all the sleeve first sleeve ribbing all frogged um, and I'm actually going to cut this yarn off and not use it to re-knit I will only use it if I run out of this yarn um, the reason that I'm doing that is this yarn is obviously like has not been knit with yet so it's nice and like straight flat yarn whereas you can see this is all crinkly because it's been 
knit up and in the shape of knitting and ribbing for well I finished this in December so for nine months um, and like you could knit with this um, but in the stockinette especially you'll be able to tell that it would be like a little bit squiggly and yes it will block out but it'll just be a nicer fabric if we knit it with this so that's what we're going to do I'm just going to cut a long tail and I will eventually weave this end in and this is my little sleeve cuff ribbing ball and just gonna put this you're sitting in my yarn uh, leftover yarn bin so I'm just gonna put it in there and now I just get to knit this so I'm excited this will be a fun little project to revisit redo this ribbing because one by one rib is not the fastest for me to knit but sleeve one is done it's kind of I'm calling it like a Franken sleeve can you see where I picked up the stitches here yeah and it's not that I like picked them up like I just started knitting back where like it was already knit um, so I'm really hoping this just will block out. If I like pull the fabric a little bit, like you can't tell where it is. It's just when it's relaxed, I think, because this fabric is blocked and this is not. But the overall length of the sleeve is way better. Um, you can, here, let me see. Can you see the difference? You can definitely see the two inches there, so. Do this again. I know, if I move my arms, you can't really tell, but. See, wrist covered. Wrist not covered. So I'm gonna, man, someone really wants to talk to me. I'm um, gonna do the same thing on this sleeve, add two inches, and then I really think I'm gonna redo the, the collar. Um, I've been rereading the pattern and there are instructions for a crochet pickup that doesn't leave all these holes. And then I think I'm gonna do a little bit longer. This is like 10 rows. I think I wanna do like 14 and then fold it over just to make a nice squishy, little bit tighter, closer to the neck, folded over collar. Um, I really should have done that <laughs> the first time. I should have done all of this the first time, but it'll be better. So let's go fix it. <laughs>
Friday, September 15th. Um, that first sleeve, and it's dark in here. It's still like um, almost 8 a.m. and it's cloudy outside. That first sleeve ribbing took me freaking three days to complete. This second one, I did all of this last night. Let me double check, they're the same lengths. Uh, yeah, should be fine. It's just funny how like, you know, sometimes one by one ribbing just drags on forever and sometimes I'm motivated and I can get it all done in one evening while watching some great reality TV. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was watching last night. But gonna do the sewn bind off and move on to the collar, which I'm kind of excited about, so. We have both sleeves done. Can you see? That oh, doesn't look too bad on camera. Gotta bring it closer. There's the line. This should block out. Got a fuzz. Okay, so this is how much yarn I have left. Definitely think I have enough for the collar. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna like rip it out and not use this yarn to redo it. Um, but I do have, you know, this plus the yarn I ripped out from the sleeve cuffs if I do need more, but I don't think I will. I'm gonna do like 14 rounds. I'm gonna do the crochet pickup. I'm gonna do like 14 rounds and then the pattern actually says to do one round with a smaller needle size and then do like another, you know, however many rounds you're gonna do. I'm choosing 14, um, which is different. In the past I've seen, um, and I've done like where that fold is, instead of going down one needle size, I've done just like a full purl round. So I'm gonna try going down one needle size. I think that's an interesting technique. I'm interested to see how it looks and how it feels. Um, I have a feeling it'll look better because you won't get all those pearl bumps where you would have knits. So, I don't know. Let's see. Let's let's figure it out. I did a really good job weaving it ends. It's got to be over here. I might just have to cut it. Mm -mm -mm, which I don't really like. I can do a small cut. try this cut one stitch and it disappears and nothing comes up like what did I even cut where did it go there it is okay I must have not cut the top stitch there we go I'm also considering wet blocking this like after I take this collar off. I'm worried there's like, you know, there's going to be a lot of holes right along the pickup edge here. So I'm considering wet blocking it. Maybe I'll just need to steam block it to like reset that before I do the crochet pickup. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to see how it looks. I'm just annoyed. Like I'm tired of all the, you know, 
think I, you could see it better when I'm wearing it, but yeah, you see all these like holes where I picked it up? I don't like those. I want those gone. <laughs> I've seen other people's versions of this sweater that the pickup just looks so good and everyone's like, yeah, I did the crochet edge reinforcement like it says in the pattern and I was, <laughs> you know, I just didn't do that. I was knitting this sweater in December of last year and I was just trying to get this done like any by any means possible get it done before the end of the year so like by the end of December 31st and I'm pretty sure I finished this like a couple days before like right up at the end um but I was like so focused on just get it done, get it done, get it done that I didn't like take the time to make sure it was looking good. So that's why we're taking the time now to redo it because I reach for this sweater a lot um, or at least I did, you know, last winter, you know, January, February, March. Um, and, but every time I would put it on, I'd be like, the sleeves are too short, neckline isn't as good as it could be, so then I would, like, put it on and then take it off and decide not to wear it, so, that's why we're doing this. And it's just a lesson to myself, and maybe to you, to not do that in the future. Being fast and getting things done in quick time frames is nice, but making something that you will actually wear and that will fit you really nicely the way that you like is arguably more important than just getting it done fast. So thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> I'm going to continue ripping this out and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Guys, pulling that collar out was a disaster. <laughs> that was so difficult, but oh, let me turn it around so you can actually see it. It's done. And I actually don't think like the edge here looks too bad. So I don't think I need to do any sort of blocking. I'm just gonna go in, do the crochet pickup, and go from there. This is a labor of love. I'm going to love this sweater forever once this is done. cut my hair <laughs> it feels so good and the thing that I really wanted to show you oh I have finished the knitting for my collar I don't you can't really see it this is a really bad angle my camera is connected to power right now um, but I finished the knitting so we're going to fold it down and sew it down and it's gonna look great. So I'm almost done.
it's blocked. The sleeves are so much better. I'm so happy with the length of these. I redid the neckline. Look, can you see this? Hold on. Can you see how good this joint is? There's no holes. It's seamless. It looks so good. Highly, highly, highly recommend this method using the crochet chain instead of just being dumb and picking up stitches how you thought you should do it but not following the pattern. But yeah, I'm so happy. This is gonna look so good in Ireland, I can't wait. So this feels like the biggest accomplishment that I really needed to get done was this. You can't even see, I blocked it. You can't really see anymore where the join was. You can kind of feel it right there, but. Okay, it's been weeks since I have worked on this. I even considered not lengthening the sleeves. And I've actually been spending the morning editing uh, this video. And I was like, you know what, we need to do the sleeves. Like, we just need to get it done. So, it gave me a little bit more motivation to do that right now, today. So that is what we are working on next. like basically doubled the length of the cuff Let's already see how much longer this is I think it's perfect yay as I'm binding off this sleeve I just can't help but think that this you know these 14 rows additional rows that i just did plus an extra bind off have literally taken me mm, maybe an hour to two hours total to get done and it's like i could have just done this the first time when i was knitting this sweater back in March. I think I knit this one in March. Um, and it's just kind of like frustrating, you know, that I could have just had a perfect sweater at the, at the time that I knit this the first time. 
instead of, you know, living the past few months with the sleeves too short and rushing through it all the first time to like get it done as quickly as possible instead of spending the time to make it right. So I know I talked about it when I was finishing up my Dear Duomo, um, but it's just another reminder to myself at least, hopefully to you also, to try on your sweaters as you're knitting them and make sure they're fitting right the first time so you don't have to live with them not being what you want and you don't have to go back and repair them a few months later. I am proud of myself for um, doing these fixes and for not just like living with them because I know that I would wear the sweaters way less uh, or I guess I know I will wear the sweaters way more having done these changes so I did it this was um, less added on compared to the Dear Duomo and you can kind of see there it does look different right here compared to right here but I think it'll block out. And it's like a sleeve cuff. So like when you're wearing a sweater, who's looking that hard at your sleeve cuff? Nobody. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the next one. I don't know how much of it I'll film, but I will show you uh, probably when I'm blocking this, re-blocking it, and definitely what it looks like when it's all done. both sleeves okay you can definitely see you know where the new stitches were added but I'm gonna give this a block and oh yeah I mean, I mean I think I already showed you but I finished the hem as well lengthening this let me try it on and show you what it looks like now because I think I'm gonna finish wrapping up this video while this is blocking so I don't know if I'll be able to show you what it looks like after it's done blocking but it's not going to grow too much um so it'll be pretty similar to how it is now so one sec okay I put on real pants <laughs> like a real person so we can see how this fits but even just like putting it on, I can feel that the sleeves are like where they're supposed to be. Like it doesn't feel too short or anything. And here's the length now. I love it. It's perfect. The split hem. And I mean, most importantly, the sleeves. The sleeves are the perfect length now. I'm really happy with it and I was considering not bringing this one to Ireland because I felt like I just felt like I didn't need like another sweater but now that it's all fixed and like feels nice uh you know it may just end up in my suitcase who knows but there it is Right, so we are done. Well, sort of done. Um, I did not make the changes to the cozy cross to my cozy classic raglan. 
I'm um, just gonna save those for later. At this point, I'm like five days away from leaving for Ireland and I need to focus on packing and casting on uh, at least one other project to take with me on the trip and you know all of that fun stuff So let me just do a quick recap on what I did get completed This is my dear Tuoma sweater and I finished this so we lengthened the sleeves Of course while I'm sitting here <laughs> they look short, but I added a couple inches here to lengthen the sleeve of course, this yarn is pilling like crazy. I think it's because it's a cashmere blend, but both sleeves got lengthened. I'm very, very happy with them. And I changed and updated and edited and refreshed the collar. So if you remember, the collar kind of had holes all over it, all around where the pickup was. I used the recommended crochet chain pickup method that's in the pattern. Um, highly recommend that method and this pattern in general. Um, and I did a double folded collar. So it's squishy and it looks really good. My only slight issue is the connecting part right here is a little tight. So it sits a little tight right here on my neck and my throat. So when I wear this, um, just gonna have to see how it feels, how I get get on with it. Hopefully it doesn't bother me too much, but I'll have to update you at some point uh, if I make a decision to like redo this at all. But I'm really, really happy with the way it looks. I think it looks so gorgeous. And I'm really happy with the double folded collar. I think it's cute and it's squishy. And it kind of matches like the long ribbing here on the sleeves and on the bottom uh, of the sweater. So this was the first change that I made. It's blocked. It's completely done. Second were the changes to my Sember sweater. My Sember sweater is currently on the blocking boards, um, but I did show you what the changes look like. I lengthened the body ribbing at the bottom uh, by an inch or two, and I lengthened the sleeve ribbing by about an inch also. So I'm really happy with the way that's fitting now. I won't have cold wrists anymore with either of these two sweaters so it's great um, and that's it I would really recommend doing a fall refresh with your hand knit wardrobe um, at least giving all your sweaters that you're planning on wearing soon a wash and a block get them revitalized for this upcoming season and if you have any changes that you've been wanting to make on any of your sweaters now is also a really great time to do so so if you're planning on refreshing any sweaters in your wardrobe drop a comment down below let me know what your plans are and that's it um, you will be seeing from me a few videos uh, coming up that I've already got filmed and edited and ready to go uh, while I'm away on my trip to Ireland. And when I get back towards the end of October, you will be seeing, uh, I don't even know how many videos <laughs> we'll get out of it, but you'll see some of my trip. I'm uh, probably going to do a few vlogs and maybe something else uh, from what I get up to in Ireland. So. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button so you can come back and see all of that fun stuff. And that's it. I hope you got some knitting time in today, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!